I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Ngunnawal and Ngambri peoples who've celebrated their culture on this land for thousands of years. I'd like to pay respects to their elders, both past and present, and I'd like to acknowledge all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. I remember the moment I knew it was possible to be an artist. It was the same year that I received a box of 72 Derwent pencils. Those pencils helped me to fall in love with the visual arts. They were full of potential, waiting to be used, keen to be sharpened. Each one had their own name, things like Emerald and Red Violet Lake. Colours that created images in my mind, images that I felt compelled to represent on paper. When I was 10, I visited the Big Pineapple with my family. Looking down from the top of that fantastical sculpture changed my perspective on the world below. I remember that experience as a series of images, images that connect to emotion and to sensations. Artists create images, and galleries are the places we can visit to share them. Art is about who we are and what we value. Art Artists create versions of the world and, and how it changes. And in this way, art mirrors human experience. It makes visible through colour and shape, materials and texture, ideas that we can test and explore. A great artist is someone who uses this language and makes it look easy, as if you could do it yourself. However, works of art can also stretch our minds and our, imagin our imaginations. They can transform our attitudes, perhaps connect to our deeper selves. In the words of, in the words of James Kuno, they can make us walk away at a different angle to the world. <laughs> Connecting to a work of art can be a little bit like falling in love. It just happens. For the past 10 years, I've worked at the National Gallery of Australia as a gallery educator. My role brings together many of my passions for the visual arts, making, learning and sharing. I spend a lot of my time talking to people about art, people who may be visiting the gallery for the first time, people who may not think that art is for them. And a significant group of people I spend time with are people living with dementia and their carers. The gallery began a six-week art and Alzheimer's pilot program in 2007. We started small because we needed to build knowledge and skills for the new, this new audience. We were helped along the way by organisations such as Alzheimer's Australia and also a team of clinical psychologists who evaluated the program. What became obvious almost immediately that there were positive benefits in this program for everyone involved. What I saw in the gallery is the way art and galleries was the way works of art can make a difference to people's lives. And this is what I want to share with you today. We live in a world where the population tree is being turned on its head. People are living longer, and over the next 20 years, 25% of the population will be over 65, almost equal in number to those under the age of 15. There are problems associated with an ageing population, and one of them is that the longer we live, the more likely we are to develop dementia. Dementia currently has no cure, and one in 10 people over the age of 65 is living with this diagnosis. What would you want? What would you expect if you were one of the 350,000 Australians living with dementia? I want to suggest a link between arts and health, based on my experience, that could transform our attitudes to both. What if you went to the doctor and they told you that one of the best treatments for you would be to regularly visit the gallery? What if they said that this treatment would be good for your mind and your body, but most of all it could help you cope with the future? People living with dementia need help to live well, 
and one of the best non-pharmacological treatments they receive could be a visit to a gallery, and here is why. Social isolation is almost a given for people with dementia. There are many reasons for this. For somebody who's been active and in control of their life, the change in circumstances that dementia presents can be embarrassing, distressing, and ultimately terrifying. Art is a bridge. The people who come to the gallery have vastly different life experiences, just like all of us here today. Art is a bridge that can not only connect you and I, it is a bridge that can reconnect people with dementia to their sense of self, to the continuity of their lives, and to their sense of shared humanity that they feel as if they are losing. Alzheimer's Australia recommends six, <coughs> six steps that you can take to delay the onset of dementia. The first three, good sleep, good diet, plenty of exercise, you can get at home. But the other three, mental stimulation, social activity, and stress management, these can happen in the gallery. Galleries, public galleries, are for everyone. Part of their purpose is to be inclusive and to promote social harmony. Galleries can lead the way to remove barriers of discrimination and marginalisation. In the gallery, we work hard to enable people with dementia to participate. We sit down. We look at just three or four works of art over the course of an hour. We connect with works of art in a very practical way by looking, thinking, feeling, and talking. So when people come together, when they share their ideas, when they listen to each other and consider each other's opinions, they're able to arrive at an interpretation of a work of art far greater than what they could achieve as individuals. Being part of this process to create meaning is enriching and life-affirming. Chris was diagnosed with dementia at the age of 50, and he came to the gallery every fortnight for quite a few years. I got to know Chris very well, and I felt that I could interview him to document the program. Chris talked about how the gallery had helped to transform his attitude. I was in a very bad place, he said, talking about his mental health when we first met him. As we listened, we could hear the mental shifts Chris made mid-sentence as he sought to find the words to express himself. Despite this, Chris said something that I didn't expect. He talked about the journey. He talked about others and how he hoped that together they could lighten their burden. Sometimes the visual arts can help change our attitude about the value of our lives. At the end of the interview, Chris said something that surprised me. He said, I'm leading the best life I ever have. On another visit, Chris was drawn to this photograph and he began to describe his mother. She was vivacious and outgoing, he said. She even had a white swimsuit like the model. We were in the moment. We were with him, captivated by his description of this glamorous woman. And then, in a heartbeat, he changed the atmosphere. She was just like me, he said. Mostly, we talk too much when we're pe with people with dementia. The skill and discipline we practice in the gallery is to talk less and to use other means of communication. Things such as gesture, body language, the tone of voice, pauses, but very active and considered listening. I spend an hour at a time with small groups of people living with dementia. Some live at home and some live in residential care facilities. I can't change the circumstances of their lives and I can't cure their dementia, but what I can do is I can offer them a distraction. I can offer them a respite from their daily stress and I can give them the time to use their mental ability. 
Every time Wendy comes to the gallery, she tells me that these hours are the only time she doesn't think about her diagnosis. We can connect to works of art in many different ways. This is Wendy's favourite painting because it reminds her of growing up in the country. But it reminds me of Wendy herself, strong and stoical. Because dementia is degenerative, opportunities to learn and grow are often overlooked for people. I feel intelligent again was a comment made by George at the end of the very first program we ran at the gallery. George was an engineer and it was important that he could share his knowledge and expertise. He was drawn to this sculpture by Hossein Valamanesh and he talked about himself. He said, that is me. I feel like I'm disappearing. That piece of granite is my dementia. Like Chris, George was able to express himself, to voice his thoughts through this object external to himself in an environment where he felt safe. I'm not sure whether we learn more about the brain when it does or it doesn't work. What I see in the gallery is that the brain is a fighter. It doesn't roll over and it doesn't give up. When people are given time and the opportunity, then the abilities that they still have come out to play. Just a few days ago, I was in the gallery with a group. We'd looked at a couple of works of art and their responses had surprised me. We needed to finish on something uplifting and you can't get much more uplifting than Monet's Water Lilies. Immediately we sat down, the discussion was animated. We talked about the colour. We talked about the time of day this may have been painted. We talked about Monet's lily pond. And then we got on to the confounding sense of space. What about negative space, I said, and I noticed some blank faces. So I put my hand on my hip and I said, see my arm and my body? This is what we call positive space. But this space in here, the space around me and over my shoulders, this is what we call the negative space. And I turned to Helen, who hadn't said that much, and I said, Helen, what would you do if I asked you to paint all of the air between yourself and the painting? Quick as a flash, she said, I'd be blown away. I've talked a little bit about my own passion for the visual arts. I've talked a little bit about visiting the gallery and what a good treatment it could be. And I've mentioned some of the people I've met. I want to tell you about Betty. Betty was in a wheelchair. She came to the gallery every week for six weeks. She always held a doll as if it was a baby. And caring for this doll totally absorbed and distracted her. On her last visit, my colleague Kate turned to her as she had done many times before and she said, Betty, what do you think? Betty put down the doll. She looked up and she held out her arms, palms upwards. She looked us in the eye and she mouthed the word, thank you. Remember those pencils? Brand new? and then stumps almost too short to sharpen. They didn't change their color, they just needed more patience to get results. How do you stretch your minds and your imaginations? Are you leading the best life you ever have?